Hi there, I'm Andy Neal and this is a motion quick tip. Alright, let's say you want to animate some text like it's being drawn on. The method's fairly simple, but it can take some time to build the effect if the text you're using is really intricate. The basic principle is to use an animated mask to reveal the text over time. And I'm going to build that mask with the paint stroke tool. Okay, so here I have my text object in its own group. I use the brush script font for a cursive look. Plus, I made the text a lot larger than I'm actually going to use it, but it's easier to build the effect with large text and then you can scale it down later. Create a new group above the text group and call it mask. Make sure it's selected and then choose the paint stroke tool from the toolbar or else just hit P on the keyboard. Then starting right here, I'm just going to trace the D in this first word. Now this type of work is much easier with a pen and tablet than it is with a mouse. If you don't have a pen and tablet though, don't worry. The tracing of the letters doesn't have to be exact because we're going to be adjusting it afterwards. Also, instead of the paint stroke tool, you could use the Bezier tool to achieve the same effect. And in fact, it's sometimes preferable because it's a much more precise tool. But if you have the tablet like me, then this is typically faster. The key thing to pay attention to is that your shapes are continuous where the letters are connected. So in this case, the D should be one shape and the rest of the word should be another. Same with the S and the rest of that word. When you're finished, you should have four separate shapes. Okay, now we need to adjust our work. First, I'm going to zoom in a bit with Command Plus. Then hold down the space bar and click and drag in the canvas to reposition the canvas so that I can see my D nice and clearly. Go up to the selection tool, hold it, click and hold it down to reveal all the selection tools. Pick the third one from the bottom, that's called the control points tool. When you select the first paint stroke, you should see all the control points for this shape. Go around and adjust these control points until you have it following the shape and you can delete any extra ones if you feel like you have too many. Basically you want a nice trace of the letter. Then in the shape tab of the inspector increase the width until the shape covers the entire letter. You may need to make some uh, additional adjustments at the end there as well. The important thing to remember is to make sure that this shape doesn't cover any of the other letters besides the D. So right here it's kind of covering the E so I'm going to pull it back until it doesn't anymore. Okay, now that the D is finished, I'm going to go on to the next shape. So same as before, delete any excess points and just reposition all the other ones so that they properly trace the letters. Then using the same technique, increase the width and cover the remaining letters of this segment. Continue on until you've done this with all the shapes. When it's finished, it should look like this. These shapes constitute our mask. To animate them is actually very easy. We can do it with behaviors. I'm going to turn off the background for a moment so that you can see the shapes better. Select the first shape here at the bottom of the group and go to Add Behaviors, Shape, Right On. Go a few frames forward in the timeline, maybe to about 8 or so. Hit O on the keyboard to trim the behavior to this point. And I'll play and see if that uh, looks like it's animating on at the right speed. I think that works pretty good. Now just advance a few more frames in the timeline. This is where I'm going to start the second half of the word. Select the next shape and hit I on the keyboard to trim the layer's in point. Copy the write on behavior to this shape by holding down the option key and dragging it on top. This is a quick little trick for duplicating layers and it works perfectly in this case since we need to apply the same behavior to all of these shapes. But we are going to need to adjust the timing a bit. The length of that behavior was actually fine for the D but it's a little fast for writing the rest of the word so I'm just going to grab the end of this and drag it out a little ways and then play it to see how it looks. I'm just kind of looking for a feel so maybe a little more. Not bad. Alright, good. So now I've got my first word, advance a little further in the timeline and then select paint stroke 2 and hit I on the keyboard to 
adjust its endpoint. And now we're going to just grab that first write-on behavior and option drag to copy it onto paint stroke 2. And because it's a single letter, we won't need to change the timing for that. Just advance a little further in the timeline, select paint stroke 3, adjust its endpoint by hitting I on the keyboard, and then take the slightly longer behavior from paint stroke 1 and option drag it onto paint stroke 3 and then play it to see how it looks. Now that last one is just a little too fast so I'm just going to drag it out a little more because it's there's a few more letters there. I'm going to set and and I'm also going to set a play range. So I'm going to go slightly past the end of my animation and hit command option O to set the end of a play range and just loop it a little bit and see how it looks. Not too bad. Okay. So now I think I've got my timing right. Now it's time to apply the mask. Select the text group and then go up to the object menu and choose add image mask. An image mask is unique because any layer, whether it's still or animated, can be used to power the image mask. For me it's going to be all these animated shapes that are conveniently located inside their own group. So with the image mask selected, in the image mask tab of the inspector, I want you to drag the entire mask group into the mask source well. Turn the background layer back on and play it to see how it works. Alright, pretty good. Just a slight little bit of cleanup that we need to do. Scrub through your animation, look for any places where the mask is revealing a little too much of the letter. Then just select that particular paint stroke, go back up to your selection tool bar and grab that control point selection again and just adjust the control points to hide what you don't want it to see. Just like that. There you go. So there's that D. It's nice and beautiful now. Try the same with the next letter. You may not be able to get it perfectly all the time, but do your best. And that's all there is to it. I'm Andy Neal. And this is a motion quick tip.